Okay, you guys, so recently I went to visit my aunt and uncle and my Tio Mario made discada, which is one of my favorite things that he makes. Here, I'm just adding a little bit of his homemade green salsa on top and I'm digging in. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I make this at home. So good. So today I'm gonna show you how to make discada on the stovetop at home. My Tio Mario loves to do discadas his way, and I like the way he makes it. Uh, I don't exactly have every single thing that he usually adds to it, but this is pretty close. So one thing I like about when he makes his discada is he uses marinated meat. Uh, sometimes he buys it from the meat market, or sometimes he marinates it himself. And this is his little trick. He uses the um, achote, the uh, anato condiment, and this is already like a pre-seasoned marinade that he picks up from the Mexican meat markets. And this is his secret. He loves to add the vinegar from pickled jalapeno peppers uh, into the meat or into the discada. And sometimes he adds pickled jalapenos in the mix as well. I'm gonna go with a milder version. So I'm just gonna be using the juice to marinate my beef. Here I have a pound of just thin cut uh, beef steaks, like what you would use for milanesa and I just cut them into small little pieces. Here I have eight ounces of chicken breast. Uh, typically you might wanna use pork meat. Um, I didn't have any in the freezer. I only had uh, chicken tenders and this is eight ounces and I just cubed it. I'm also gonna be using some uh, smoked sausage, some smoked bacon. Here I have one bell pepper, Roma tomatoes, some onion, fresh garlic. Uh, my uncle likes to use fresh cilantro, but I only had the dried today, so I'm going with dried. And, you know, salt and season to taste, and uh, I'm going to put it together. So I'm going to show you really quick how to marinate the meat. Just add a couple of tablespoons of this marinade, this achote marinade, maybe like one or two tablespoons. I think that should be enough for a pound of beef. And gonna go in with like a tablespoon of the uh, a little bit more of the uh, pickling liquid from the can of pickled jalapenos there we go and just give it a mix and um, you know for this meat this is not a super tender cut of meat but it is thin so you know a couple of hours I mean you could do overnight um, but yeah uh, oh it smells good so this marinade has like uh, citric, you know, citrus juice. Um, it does have salt, ground cumin, garlic, onion, um, the um, powdered achote, like achote that in powder form. It just it smells so good. And this is typically what the meat markets use to marinate that red meat. I actually have a red meat uh, marinade recipe video. I'll put it somewhere here at the top of the video or below and you can check out how I make that from scratch. Okay, so that's the beef. Nice. So here we're going with the uh, chicken. Same thing. I'm just going to add the rest of that pickling liquid. I'm just going to add a little bit. You don't really, I'm, I may have added too much to that beef. You just really need a little bit here. I'm only working with eight ounces of chicken breast. Give it a mix. Let it marinate for like an hour or so. And uh, that's his little secret to his discadas. This is, you know, for people that, you know, um, make discadas and say, well, you got to add chorizo or pork meat or some people like to do shrimp in the mix. This is just something simple to do at home. And, you know, I like it. So there it is. It's not totally authentic, um, but I love the way my uncle makes his discadas. Okay, done. Okay, so let me show you. I only used about eight ounces of the smoked sausage and I saved uh, the other half of that sausage link um, in the fridge. And I also used uh, only eight ounces of the bacon. I already uh, chopped up all my fresh ingredients and uh, the meat. I let it sit here on the countertop while I prepped everything else because it was still really cold. So I think it's, you know, at the temp that I want. It's, it's marinated enough. But like I said, with the beef, you know, overnight works, a couple of hours. And with the chicken, you know, it doesn't have to be that long. So anyways, let's put this together. I'm working with like the largest pan that I own. 
this is definitely like a 12 inch pan. So I just turned on the heat um, and I'm gonna add my bacon into the cold pan and render out as much fat as possible. That's the first thing I'm going to start with. Okay, so, oops, let's get it this way. So the bacon's doing um, things in the pan here, it's cooking, but I'm gonna also add in that smoked sausage. Um, you know, I, I just think out of the other meats that I'm using, these are the ones that are gonna render or give off more fat into the pan, so. And I, I kind of turned on the heat. I'm working with like a medium heat on my largest burner, uh, just to kind of give you like a, to gauge exactly what I'm using as far as the heat source. So I'm gonna go for another five minutes or so with this, and then, um, you know, we're gonna work on the other stuff. Okay, so aside from the meat, uh, you know, I'm gonna have some aromatics going into the pan. So, let's see, I'm gonna go with my bell pepper, onion, and Roma tomato going in. Things smell so good right now. I'm also gonna, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss in the garlic. This is three cloves of garlic that I minced. Going in, give it a saute. And uh, you're just gonna start building on this discada. Now, you know, if you're doing this outside with the actual disco that people use for this, uh, everyone has like their own version of this, uh, more authentic. Um, let's see, some uh, another great budget-friendly uh, money saver, instead of going with like some sort of beef skirt or steak uh, meat, for the beef, you can go with ground beef. That's a great way to, you know, add beef into the mix. So this, oh gosh, it smells so good. And then you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and add this as well. This is my dried cilantro. Fresh cilantro is the way to go if you got it. This is what I'm working with today. Okay. So you know what? I'm gonna make room here, just in the center. We're gonna go in with the ground beef, or not the ground beef, the beef the steak meat that I had. Okay, so I'm gonna let this hang out in the middle. You know, when you start adding the beef, that's when the temp of the pan uh, kind of drops down the temperature, so you wanna go up with the heat here. And it's gonna go through stages. It's gonna saute, sizzle, then it's going to release a lot of its uh, rendered fat and juices. So then the meat kind of stops browning and sauteing and it sort of starts to boil. That's okay. We're gonna work it in with everything else and it's gonna go for a while until it, um, until the natural juices sort of evaporate, you're left with the fat in the pan and then you're gonna start seeing it brown. So just hang in there. But I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna keep it in the center here for a little bit and let it, uh, you know, do its thing. Okay, so I've let this kind of hang out in the center, so. Now it's time to start just kind of mixing it up into the pan with everything else. And once I mix it up, um, I'm gonna continue cooking it um, before I add the chicken breast. The chicken breast is gonna be the last thing uh, because it's not gonna take that long to cook. I feel like if I add the chicken breast now, it'll just kind of overcook and get dry. This is why I would prefer to add maybe chicken thigh meat or, you know, just go with the, um, the traditional, you know, pork meat, which a lot of people do put into their discadas. There's so many ways to do this, so many variations out there. You know, pick the one you like and give it a try. It, it, they're all probably really, really good. Okay. Okay, so my chicken is over here. But first, what I'm doing is, again, creating a space in the center. What I'm gonna do before adding the chicken is just add just a small drizzle of cooking oil in the center. You might not have to do that. And then just add your chicken. Oops, there we go. And I'm just gonna keep it kind of in the center, let it cook a little bit before I start mixing it in. I know you're thinking, oh my gosh, raw chicken at the end. Well, it's gonna cook. I have this, I cranked up the heat. So there we go, leave that there like that for a little bit. Okay, so let's go. Let's start mixing in this chicken. And then once I get this chicken uh, like sauteed a little bit more, I'll mix it into the rest of the 
the meat. Okay, let's mix this up. And now, once I have this all mixed, I'm gonna let this go for another five minutes and it's done. I'll, I'll put in the tortillas. Okay, so I have some tortillas here and I pushed the meat to the like one side and this is how I'm going to uh, warm up my corn tortillas. You just kind of, and I mean, you could do it in the middle, like in the center, but this meat is cooked. So you just kind of push it to the side and just heat up your corn tortillas. They'll get some of the flavor from the marinade, the juices from the pan, and this is it guys, so good. You're making a taco here. So let's get some of this. My son decided to come over here. There we go. It's hot, let's see. And I like, you could add your salsa. Like in the beginning of the video, I showed you my uncle likes to have a green salsa with this. But um, I'm gonna go with, this is just like a Cholula hot sauce. It's a green one. And there we go. And that's the taco. I'm gonna make some more corn tortillas. And this is uh, what I made for lunch, dinner time-ish. It's like a late, late lunch. <laughs> so good. With the ratios that I used, it, it lets the beef kind of be the star of the show, but you can definitely change the ratios of the meat to this. It's really, you know, what's convenient for you, what you prefer, and um, if you're feeding a lot of people, yeah, go ahead and add all the sausage, all the, the bacon um, into the mix. It's so good. So anyways, I hope you guys give this recipe a try. I hope you like it, and thanks for watching. Bye.